Hello and welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe. It is David Bonson here, your Chief Investment Officer at the Bonson Group, and it is uh, getting close to the end of the market day on Thursday. we got a couple hours to go, but it's been a big week up for the markets. This is actually, I had a look at the numbers at the end of the close today, but it may be one of the biggest deltas between like uh, the spread between how the Dow is done and the S&P and NASDAQ in particular today that I've seen in a long, long time. And the reason being that... Um, I had put a chart in DividendCafe.com a week or two ago about the massive market capitalization of just five companies. Those five were Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Google, and Facebook. And what a disproportionately huge impact those companies had in the performance of the overall index. And uh, now you have one of those companies, Facebook, is down 20% today. So it is, of course, dragging the NASDAQ and the S&P down a lot more, where in reality, the Dow is up 140 points. Most stocks on my screen are up, uh, virtually all. I mean, not all of them, but a very high percentage. And, and so that impact is really kind of what I alluded to before. Index investors right now are very captive to a few names, and those names can do real well and help the index, and they can do poorly and hurt. People just have to be aware of it. I'm not really saying it in a good or a bad way. Um, well, actually, I, I, I probably am, but you'll have to read between the lines on all that. You get my point. Uh, so why is the market up this week? Well, there was um, indication yesterday that the European Union trade tariff debacle may not be as debacleish as we had thought. Uh, that, in fact, they seem to be making progress towards some sort of an arrangement. That's all good. Um, but fundamentally, this earnings season has been wonderful. And it was expected to be top line revenues. I, I, I can't really make a forecast right now as to how it's all going to play out because we're not far enough along. I feel better about doing that once over half the companies are reported and we're not quite there yet. But overall, really positive results in top line revenue. We already knew earnings were going to be great. You're more than likely going to have record earnings growth and S&P profits sitting at all time highs. So it would stand to reason you'd have a market going higher when profits are going higher, especially when that multiple had already compressed that P.E. ratio down to a number more in line with historical averages. In our chart of the week in DividendCafe.com this week, I put a chart of where the S&P stands from a valuation standpoint. Everyone always likes to talk about the price level. The Dow is at all-time high. S&P is all-time high. The price can be at an all-time high, and that has nothing to do with an all-time high. Think about what I just said. The price can be at an all-time high, and that has nothing to do with being at an all-time high. The valuation at an all-time high is a more pertinent, relevant, actionable data point. When the Dow was at 10,000 trading at 24 times earnings in early 2000, that was a lot more expensive than the Dow at 25,000 trading at 16 times earnings, or you get my point. So right now, we're pleased with where things are. The month of July has been very good for equity investors. Um, when I say we're pleased and that July has been good for equity investors, those two things are not connected. We're pleased because we like our positioning in portfolio allocation on behalf of clients. The market having a good month no more pleases us than the market having a bad month upsets us. Our clients do not depend on the movement of market prices in one month for their financial success or outcomes. They never will. And, and that is key to the way we view these things. Uh, still a lot of questions around the Fed, around interest rates. Uh, that spread right now in bond yields, it's fascinating. It actually has widened a little bit between the two-year and the 10-year. But the 10-year and 30-year are very, very tight. So you have a very um, uh, clear sign from the market that the Fed has uh, moved to short-term rates higher. The intermediate spot at 10-year is in line with where GDP growth is right now. And that the longer-term level is uh, the market saying, we just don't believe this thesis of inflation coming. Uh, that could change. That's where things stand now in the bond yield curve and what it indicates to us about uh, global economic or, or macroeconomic conditions. We will get the second quarter GDP print tomorrow. 
Um, so I wish I could be recording this after it came, but a lot of people believe we're gonna see a 4% number in real GDP growth would be the largest number we've seen in many, many years. Um, and I certainly think we're gonna see something over 3%. And, uh, of course, that's interesting from a short-term standpoint. It speaks to the efficacy of corporate tax reform. But ultimately, the sustainability of GDP growth number is what a lot of things are hinging on in the economy and the stock market and also our ability to deal with our national debt. So I've covered a few different topics here to give you a little taste of what's on our mind. Um, please read DividendCafe.com for a little unpacking of our thoughts on inflation uh, market valuation where we have some charts and so forth. Uh, but that's uh, the main things I wanted to bring to you this week. We'll come back next week with the final numbers for the month of July, a look at the second quarter uh, economic GDP growth. And, you know, who knows? Maybe President Trump will have something to say this week as well we could talk about. You never know, do you? Thanks for listening, Dividend Cafe.